Hello tribe, welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be more or less for my own self, kinda a bit of a diary too, so I'll have something to look back to. But for you, I think that could be helpful to make decisions in your own life. Maybe you will start paying a bit more attention to numerology. This is also a video connected very much to life path too. So if you're interested in that, if you want to hear my story, keep on watching. Guys, I was very lucky because I made it. By the way, my luggage is still there because I'm still putting things in places. Uh, so it's quite messy if you've noticed everywhere. So basically, as many of you know, um, I have been working in the office for over a couple of years after, after graduating architecture and the moment I sat at my desk, I remember I looked around and as if I completely zoomed out and I could see myself and everyone else in the office. And I was like, that's not how I want to live my whole life. And that moment I realized that I want to do something more. I really didn't seem to fit the schedule nine to five because for me in my head, it wasn't how I would see it, it was more like a prison for me, you know, I would put myself in this prison and for most of my life I would have a certain schedule working for someone else, which is fine for some people, but my soul was like, you are trapped, eight of swords. I was like, there is something that I have to learn here, so let's go and let's see what I can learn from this. I had a lot of issues with my groundingness. I really dearly love plans and planning and construction and all of that stuff, but it's just simply my lifestyle doesn't doesn't go with it, if you know what I mean. I was having a lot of issues with anxiety because I would use that logical part of my brain throughout the day and I would have to come back home and do tarot afterwards. So I was using my both energies. The sun was the masculine nine to five and then the moon was the feminine. I, I would literally use myself up. Now the funny fact is that the moon side would really calm me down. So even though I would spend my energy on doing readings, it would somehow calm me down. And that was something that was like, okay, we need to pay attention to this. And I already knew by that time that this is something that I'm gonna do. I didn't know exactly where I'm gonna end up being because spirituality is a very broad term. There is a lot to be done with it, you know? Basically, I was really struggling to ground myself, not because, funnily enough, of spirituality, but how much energy that nine to five would take out of me and it's because of looking at the screen switching between different projects and also i was still in that realm of spirituality too but for that job i had to be super super present and grounded so i was basically working with both i realized that i'm gonna be taking a leap of faith i have decided to leave everything behind that i have kind of built for myself. I have been studying interior design in back in Lithuania and Capital. It was a private college, really cool. Uh, it was amazing. I gained so much out of it. And um, that's when I further on went to London and I actually came to London the same way that I left London because I came to London very unexpectedly. I was basically on standstill kind of when it came to the flight. So I kind of knew that I was going, but I didn't know when. 
okay so what happened was basically my friend hit me up and he's like oh if you want to go to London I have someone who's working in tourism and um, the only thing that you have to do is to have your bags packed because you, you don't know when your flight's gonna be so I was spending my time with my friends drinking wine I remember that was 10 years ago more than 10 years ago and um, he hit me up and he goes, Brigitte, are you flying tomorrow in the morning? That's pretty much how I have left London too. I think from December 2019, I was already thinking that, you know what, family is everything. And I was always running around and doing everything, traveling, you know, and I wasn't spending as much time with them as I would like to. And that's when I started slowly thinking that, you know what, I think I want to go back home and if you would know me for me to say I want to go back home it's like are you crazy because Brigitte would live anywhere but but back home and um, that's when I was like cool okay my grandma has Alzheimer's my dad is not very good with his heart let me spend some time with family but I was uh, basically spending more time I thought I would spend more time in London because I had um, a certain amount of money that I wanted to give back and save before I go back home. Um, as you know, Joey has moved back. So jo I was living with Joey, his partner and myself in a very homely flat. And we created this vibe for ourselves, you know, it was very spiritual vibe. It was very calming, relaxing vibe. We learned a lot with Joey from each other, as you pro could probably see from the past videos. And he has decided to go to Ireland to concentrate on himself, which was an amazing change for him, I think, because he needed that growth. And once Joey left, we realized that me and him, his partner, his ex-partner, we had to look for a new home because purely to, due to crazy prices in London. And I was looking for flats at first and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm not gonna pay that much amount of money for this, you know? I was looking up there, I was like, okay, fine, Brigitte, this is fine. So maybe I'm not gonna stay in London for years. Um, I'm just gonna stay for some time until I go back home. And that's afterwards, I'm gonna find a warm country to live in. So I just need a space. So that's when I started looking for rooms. And I realized that decent room, which is, I'm not talking about amazing room, I'm just talking about decent room, right? Would cost around 750 pounds a month. And I'm like, are you mad? Like, this is not making sense London anymore because London prices are crazy if you know, if you've lived in London yourself, especially rent for a shitty room, like plus bills on top, 800 pounds a month. I'm like, this, my logic, it's, I'm not, I don't, I don't get this. I really don't get this. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna be searching for flats, uh, for rooms, like take it easy a day by day. And what happened one day after I came back home from work, I need to take a sip of tea because what happened was, now that's when I wanna start talking about paying attention to what your intuition is telling you and it can be a little bit tricky sometimes so I came back home after work and it doesn't take me a long time to decide what the heck I want to eat but that time it did and that time the date was Tuesday 3rd of March which comes up to 10 which comes up to, to 1 so it can be an ending or a new beginning how you want to see it I was what was looking at pizza and I'm like well, I really don't want that effing pizza and I was looking at the soup and I was like my body really wants soup so what that's what I re that's what I felt my body was saying eat the goddamn soup okay and my intuition was telling me two things one thing was you need to eat that goddamn pizza but you're gonna eft from this and that's why I couldn't realize like I, I couldn't understand why the heck I have to eat that pizza if I'm gonna be sick from it and I'm looking at it and I'm like there's something off about this there's something off about this and I kept putting the soup and the pizza like on on the table and I was like um and I kept hearing eat the goddamn pizza but it's gonna end up not very well 
that's what happened so I ate the pizza I didn't even finish the whole pizza because I need to do a reading that's why I was kind of rushing like every single day I would rush after work to do readings just purely because I would travel one and a half hour one way after work one and a half hour uh, back you know so I didn't really have as much time on my hands to do a lot after work and um, I ate that pizza I've made myself peppermint tea and I w I've done the reading and after the reading I realized that my stomach is a little bit heavy now who knows me you know that I uh, that is where my whole near-death experience comes from from digestive system so I always had uh, tum tummy problems you know digestive system problems so for me to go and force myself to throw up was always something natural because i would be like that doesn't vibe with me i'm fine just clearing it all out rather than toxins going to my bloodstream but that time it didn't feel like i was going to be sick it just felt a little bit heavy so i took some charcoal tablets i went to sleep because i had to go to work the next day that's why i took those pills because usually i'd be like oh it's fine you know and i woke up with this heaviness in my stomach but still not wanting to throw up i'm sorry if i'm talking about this these nasty things here but it's all gonna make sense to you and i went to the bathroom and i realized that my situation much, was much worse than i thought it would be so i basically was sick until 4 30 in the morning and i have texted around before five o'clock or after five o'clock I have texted uh, my boss saying, hey, you know what, I'm not coming in because I'm, I'm really bad. He was like, don't worry about it, take it easy. And I've texted him on the 4th of March, which comes up to 11, okay? And I don't know if you've noticed, 11 day of a month uh, tends to test you more than any other days. I'm being tested by people or something is a shift is happening for me so that's when i called in sick started shivering and i didn't have it for a long time my whole body was super weak and i called my mom and we chatted and we both know that this has happened for a reason because my mom she's a, a bit of witch too but she's doing the healings by the way energy remote healings all of that stuff she's a masseuse we both were waiting what's gonna come out of this because something had to come out of that sickness and in the evening i've started feeling a little bit like you know what what am i doing what am i doing i'm always choosing to go through much more difficult paths because I never let myself have it easy. And basically, the next day I went to work, I decided to actually leave London was on that 5th, on Thursday, which is the 12th, which comes up to 3. And I remember calling my mom saying, hey, you know what, I think it's time. That's when shit started going down because I was being tested how much you really want this. Because the whole plan of this was for me to go and work full-time doing tarot mediumships teaching people and all of the great stuff that i never really had enough time for and basically the whole corona virus got much much worse by the time i had my stuff packed and i basically started looking for the company to send my stuff with back home because i had quite a lot it wasn't just one bag that you want to send some i don't know gifts to someone i had quite a lot I had paintings as you can see in the background i had big suitcases and then more corona information started coming through where by the time i was packed poland has closed their border the poland would only uh, let massive trucks to come in lorries basically and it would be so difficult if you come in by car or if you just want to cross it was just really hard and I was like damn it because those guys have small vans 
really kind of losing hope because I was calling everyone. I was like, hey, how is that going? Like, are you still, are you still being able to pick up some parcels and send it back to Lithuania? And people would just not respond to me. People would say that they're on hold. They don't know when they're going to start sending it, etc., etc. And um, I was a little bit worried about the stuff only because my contract in that house was finishing on 23rd of March. And I knew that I had to send my stuff before I go because otherwise I wouldn't want to burden my friends with so many things. Obviously, everyone has small places in London, you know how it is here. I was being drawn to texting one company and I was like, I read the reviews before texting them and reviews were one stars. I don't know why the heck I texted them on WhatsApp. I knew that I had to. I was like, okay, reviews, I should, my intuition is saying go for it. So green light. <laughs> I texted them and uh, I texted them on the 17th of March, literally five days before having to fly out. And I still have my stuff with me. It comes up to number six, okay? And they got back to me on the 18th, the day after, which is number seven, which is really lucky, lucky number, isn't it? And they said, yeah, we're going. And I'm like, are you serious? Can you take my stuff? They are like, yeah, we are. The guy called me, the driver. The driver's name was the same name like my dad's name. So he picked the stuff up, it was all good. And I said to him, listen, how about the Poland border? and he explained everything so well to me. He said what well, we do, so we have all these little vans, then they all come together and we have uh, rented this massive lorry and lorries are allowed to come through. That was super quick because the same day they replied to me that they are going, they're gonna take my stuff, is the same day they picked up my stuff. I was like, he was calling me and I was like, I'm not back from work just yet, like what the hell, like can you come after seven, you know? So it was super quick. And I remember asking Taro about my stuff. Will it end up getting home successfully and how it will be? I had one card pull and I was given eight of wands. And I was like, it means it's pretty quick. And then that's, that's when I started packing pretty quickly. I was like, oh my God, I need to pack quickly because it seems like I'm gonna send it, I should send it quicker. But no, the situation was like, they literally picked it up the same day. That was super fast. And uh, funny fact that I didn't really want my parents to be picking my stuff up. I wanted to be back home to do so because those boxes are quite heavy. And uh, I was home by the time the stuff came because they took extra days because of Corona. So I was already home, pretty settled, cleared out a lot of stuff from the shelves, old stuff that I wanted to throw out. And in that clearing experience, basically my mom didn't touch anything that's from childhood. Funny fact, you know, life path thing, I have forgotten about it because the only thing that I told you guys is that pay attention to childhood when it comes to your life path because you're gonna have clues there. And my mom told me that I used to play with her tarot cards, which she didn't even use. She didn't know why she bought it. She would just give it to me to play as, you know, a game when I was a kid. And um, I didn't remember that until she told me and she pulled out a super old ass tarot deck. You know, that's when I was like, I do kind of remember vaguely, vaguely. But what I did remember now when I pulled out my stuff, guys, you should have seen my face. So I, w I took this, it's like a piece of, old magazine and this i wonder how this magazine is called actually oh it's just some random magazine and i have this saved from it because i would cut out from magazine um those cards that they would give you like a thicker page and i would try to predict future with them and <laughs> i completely forgot and that was something that I used to do. This completely left my mind. 
it seems like I had to find my way back to it, doesn't it? And that's when I found those very funny cards. So some of them are playing cards and some of them are those cards from the magazine that I just showed you. And they basically are tarot cards, but let me see which one that is. So that's Queen of Cups and they called it True Love Queen. So that's how funny they look like, guys. Oh my God. <laughs> True Love Night. I mean, these are so funny, aren't they? But this is basically tarot. This is literally it. And then I was digging a bit deeper. I was like, okay, came back home, chasing my life path, probably on a good track, you know? That's when I found, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> look at this, like, why would I keep this stuff? But now let's dig a bit into this. Can you see how many cards there are and how old they are? Oh my God, how old? is this deck i think this is like a keeper deck or something i mean look at the state of this <laughs> i can't look at the state of this so these are all the cards that i used to whoop one is gone that i used to apparently connect with and play with and i don't know what i was doing at that time because all the um, explanations were from either magazines or in, you know stuff like that because it was just for fun you had to somehow find you would shuffle them a thing i don't remember you would shuffle them a thing and if something matches then you have to read the meaning of it it was something like that but guys i found treasure it's basically i'm um, picking up where i've left off and I think for all of you is going to be very important to look back to your childhood and really dig deep there and remember what you used to do. So you see, I've forgotten about all of this. All I knew was what my mom told me before that she said that she used to play with my tarot deck because we're talking about tarot. But she even didn't know herself that I had so much stuff that I used to play with. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I have to dig deeper in this because I didn't go through this um, myself. I opened it up and I looked only at those two that I showed you and the rest I didn't dig deeper because I wanted to do it on camera. But this is a joke. Look at these. And I think that's in, is that in German? Hey guys, so I wanted to show you something. I don't think it was very visible in the previous shot. So the magazine that I showed you, I managed to find the date when it was printed. Let me show it to you. Okay, so it's 2002. I don't know if you can see it here, right? So it makes me 12. So at 12 years old, I was playing around with those cards already. And I don't think, um, it was very visible, the state of these old ass cards. So if that's 2002, I don't know then how old these, look at these playing cards, the state of these playing cards that I pulled. So I don't know how old it makes these cards. So I don't even know when I started having a connection with cards in general because this is very old that magazine makes me 12 right these cards I, I think i was just a kid i literally was a kid and that completely vanished from my head oh that me that's me <laughs> i'm a snake but i would also write things down on them i don't know what what that meant for me but it's just let me focus a bit it's just very funny how many tarot decks, tarot decks I I had and I've forgotten about. So you guys really pay attention to your childhood and pay attention to your north nodes as well. So you can realize, you know, why you are like you are and what where you have to be headed. Because your north node is basically your destiny, who doesn't know. So yourself is your sun sign, which is 
something that you have done already in the past life. So example, I'm a Leo. I have done all of this in the past life, what Leo wanted to do. So basically it was probably someone who lived pretty respected life, you know, was looked up to or had those material things that Leo sometimes cra crave for. I had that before and I'm tuning into my North Node now, which is Aquarius. And Aquarius is all about being different, doing things differently, humanitarian, visionary. So usually that strange person who does something that not many people do or mm, dresses up weirdly or uh, invents something, very strong humanitarian aspect to it. Theo would want to do things on his own or for himself. And I'm not saying that's egoistic, that's good because that's going to teach you a lot. But Aquarius, you see, he has to... Why I'm saying he... Maybe my masculine is taking over. So Aquarius is basically helping people out. That's how it came through in my life. Helping people out, uh, being that uh, strange person in a way where why the heck you would throw out your, you know, hardly earned bachelor's career, you know, whatever, whatever that by society is seen as something that is respected, you know, being an architect, it's respected, you know, things that... Uh, people think actually bring you security and happiness, which isn't, isn't always such case, right? And I had to leave that all behind in order to tune into my path where being a little bit strange, out of the crowd, you know, being humanitarian, really wanting to help people out is something that is bringing me this happiness. So I hope this made sense guys i hope you have picked something from this i know this is more like my own diary but i think i'm gonna be using this channel not only for pick cards but also like random videos like that maybe someone's gonna get inspired maybe someone wants to do the same maybe someone wants to do tarot or leave something behind that they have spent a lot of money and time on listen to your north node you know listen to what your soul desires you to do because your soul needs to lead you where you have to be and it does it naturally without intellect where intellect would inter intervene the soul mission because intellect would have been in my case if i listened to intellect like are you are you mad are you mad you're throwing so much money away have like school loans you know and stuff like that you've spent so much time energy sleepless nights especially in architecture if you have studied architecture yourself you know how crazy it is because a lot of people have mental issues students studying architecture because of the load that you have to deal with and basically a lot of blood and tears you know basically a lot of blood at deers you know and why would what the heck you would throw it out that would be my intellect talking but the moment you acquire the intellect and really tune into your soul and ask your soul what's making you happy what's bringing you peace 
is when you'll start shifting towards that destiny and also remember that most of the times we're being tested af how much you want this so don't be surprised if you're gonna have to risk something like in my case I've, i'm still risking a lot because of the whole financial situation um i don't know how it's gonna be but i'm very sure where i'm going remember that once once you surrender to your mission you will be a bit tested and for every each of you it's gonna be different level so for me i was basically moving through the time of corona craziness you know and i had to deal with also my workplace uh, they didn't know if i was coming back or i'm flying out so i had to ask them to leave me on the system in case i'm gonna come back so if i did come back i wouldn't have my home anymore because my contract was done i would have had my stuff with me if that didn't uh, successfully uh, work out for me I have to be couch surfing basically and being in this very crazy situation you know so that was a bit mad now another thing that i wanted to say it was magical how i managed to make it home i was flying on the 23rd which comes up to three as i said before my life path number three and everyone was stressed now that brigitte is not gonna fly out monday 23rd was the last day when people who did come to lithuania by the way most of the flights were cancelled when i went to the airport i'm gonna include the video of it all red 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 you're gonna see and um uh, I was really lucky that my flight wasn't cancelled first of all i was really lucky that they let me in the country and i was able to quarantine myself for two weeks on tuesday all the people who are flying into lithuania government has decided to force quarantine people when people were forced by police to go to those um, hotels or whatever the space that government had for those people they were all super pissed off and they w one of them said they're not letting us home you know and it was so sad for me because i was like i feel you i could have been you in this case and you were basically with strangers and people got so crazy that one got stabbed so there was some kind of argument so the whole massive chaos on tuesday so that's when afterwards government has decided not to push people because shit was basically going down you know so that was another thing that i was so lucky about and i remember i sat in the seat my seat was 8b and as usual you know how i explain what 8 means to me 8 is infinity 8 is your soul 8 never dies because 8 is representing how infinite your soul is but it also represents your life kind of mission especially for me in this lifetime so it's what your soul desires and what you do in this life put together and it was 8b and i'm bb brigitta and my surname is starts with b and no one sat next to me i remember one guy was saying like there was no one next to 8b And I was like, okay, this is this is nice, you know, this is so nice because of the whole corona thing. I didn't have a mask. I used my scarf. So guys, I was very lucky because I made it. Did you see how many cancelled flights there were? Someone was looking after me. When I passed the passport control, I, the door opened and all the luggages were out already. And literally, as I walked out, my luggage stood literally in front of me. So you know the belt that it goes around? The belt stopped already and my luggage was right in front of me. So I just had to pick it up, bam, 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 going home. So that was something incredible, guys. How spirit works, because I kept seeing so many feathers and so many signs that I was like, wow.
So gratitude, guys, if you want to get to where you want to be and if you want to be supported by universe, be grateful, do good things, but do, do not ever let your boundaries be crossed. So there has to be a balance between the two. Because what I don't really like in the spiritual community sometimes is when people are only about you know it's okay let people walk all, all over you like f fight them with love it's fine to do that and it's good to do that but not all the time no. know when you have to stand your ground and tell someone to simply piss off because you're just continually being an asshole you know so have your balance because without that balance I've seen people who have loaded themselves so much that one day they just exploded and you have to have both be a good person but never let anyone cross your boundaries okay so that's something that we need to clarify in the community i think <laughs> spiritual community because love and light is not only what we have in this in this lifetime right we have a lot of darkness that darkness gives us a lot of depth to us as people and uh, our experiences and i think that darkness is partly what makes that light so i hope this video made sense really grateful to have you here and i'm gonna see you guys in Pick a card readings because watch out, now I have time, I have peace, I feel so grounded and I feel like I unloaded so much burdens from my shoulders and I'm going to be thinking about my next adventures and where I want to be next. Until next time, bye for now.